Okay, so um, here we have a problem set. <clears throat> we're going to go through these and just make sure that we're up to speed. You should be really comfortable with a lot of this, and I'm going to move pretty quick, but you should be able to answer these questions. So I want you to write down the answers to these questions as I go through them. So what I like about this problem set, this sheet, here is that it gives you the question. It tells us identify the indicated part of each circle, and then it says explain your answer, and then the first problem is done for us. So we see point O, and then you can see what it, it's been identified down here. Point O is the center of the circle, right? But now when it says explain your answer, it says it is a point that is the same distance from each point on the circle. So you kind of got to explain the answer as well. So here we have NP. So I'm going to put in an answer in here. Let's see. Um, NP, I'm going to use the symbol for over for segment NP, is a chord. It is a segment that has its endpoints on the circle. Okay. NP is a chord. Okay. All right. You can pause the video, see if you can answer. What is line AB? What does line AB represent? Go ahead, pause the video. Okay, and you should have down here that line A, A, oh boy, what is going on there? Sorry, A, B, okay, that's not going to work for me. Let's try this again. Let's try, let me see if I put it someplace else. Okay, let's try, here we go. A, B is a tangent. It is a line that intersects the circle in exactly one point which is A, right? Okay. Go ahead and try and do D, or 4, rather. Point D. What is point D? Okay. Video paused. Okay, and the answer for point D is, D is the point of tangency. It is the point where a tangent intersects, a, oops, intersects a circle. Okay, go ahead and pause the video, figure out what segment JH is. Okay, JH is a chord. It is a segment that has its end points on the circle. Okay. Number six, pause. Okay. Line MN is a secant. It is a line that intersects circle in exactly like this, exactly two points. Okay. Sometimes we say it's a line that enters into the interior of a circle, um, but it's a line that intersects in exactly two points, so a secant. All right, now what about angle SQR? Pause. Okay, so angle SQR is a an inscribed angle. Right? It is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. It's an inscribed angle. Okay. Pause. Okay, here we go. Angle. Oh boy. How'd that happen? Let's try a different one. Here we go. Angle. T-O-U is a central angle. It is an angle whose center is, oh, whose vertex, sorry, vertex is at the center of a circle. Okay. All right, going through these here. Each angle is inscribed or central. So go ahead and see if you can get each of those answered real quick. We'll pause and have you answer all four of these real quick. Well, nine is done already. Angle U R E is an inscribed angle. 
Okay. So Z-O-M, Z-O-M is a central. K-O-M is a central angle. And Z-K-U is inscribed. Okay. We'll go past those. So now we've got to classify if each arc is a major arc, a minor arc, or a semicircle. So here we go. We can see this example here. Arc AC is a minor arc. Arc AC is a minor arc. Okay. See if you can get the next four, uh, these three done. Minor, major, or semicircle. Okay. Arc. PE is a minor arc because it only goes around less than 180 degrees. Arc FHI is a major arc. And that's because from F to I through H. You know, the H is in there, so it tells us we're going through H to get to I. So F H I is a major arc. It goes more than halfway around. More than 180 degrees around. And you should have this one too. Arc JML is a major arc. Again, for the same reason. It's going more than 180 degrees around. Okay. Arc NPQ is a semicircle. Now that's because it goes NQ is a chord, and we can see it goes through the center O, so NQ is a diameter. So NPQ goes is goes all the way halfway around a circle. So that makes it a semicircle, exactly 180 degrees. Okay. Arc. TRS is a semicircle. For the same reason, TS, it appears to be a chord. Now, if it is not, or appears to be a diameter, if you thought that wasn't right on the center, and it might not be, I mean, if we really zoomed in there, it might not be. So if it is not, you could just say that it is a major arc because it appears to be just under here, which means it it would have to go a little more than 180 degrees. So you could have said a major arc, or you could have said a semicircle. To me, that's close enough. I think I'm going to call it a semicircle. Okay, now they want us to draw. They want us to draw the part of a circle that is described. Let's see if I can do that. I don't know if I've got my draw tool here. Eh, I'm just going to, I'm going to use... Sorry. Let's see if I can. I don't see my pen tool, so I'm just going to try and I'll, I'll just show it to you. Okay, so chord A, B, they show, okay, they picked two points. They called it A and B, and they showed that it was a segment that began and ended on the circle. So radius O, E would start at O, and then it would be a segment that ends at some point, and then that point is on the circle, and it is called point E. Okay, let's... Try this again. Secant GH. Okay, secant GH. So you should pause the video and make sure you are making examples of these, right? That's what I want you to do is make examples of these. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so secant GH, a line goes through the circle, right? And intersects the circle at two points, G and H, right? Okay. Tangent. So we need a point, there's point J, so the tangent has to be a line that comes up and just touches point J and then keeps going kind of like that. Pause the video. Okay, point of tangency right there, that would be A right there, you'd mark that. Center C, marked right here. Pause video, do these last two. Okay, to do an inscribed angle, you'd go F to D to G. Now, F, D, and G are three points on the circle. Wherever you want to place them is fine, but where you're, you're starting at F, you're going to D and coming back to G, however you have them, okay? Okay, 
Draw a central angle HOI, so you need H and I as points on the circle, and then you can connect the radii HO and OI, and that would give you central angle HOI. Okay. All right, I'm going to skip through the vocabulary here. We're going to get to the skills practiced. Okay, so it says, determine the measure of each minor arc. You can see here, this minor arc, arc AB, we're just doing the minor arcs. Its central angle is 90 degrees, so the measure of arc AB is 90 degrees. So what would this be? Pause video. Hopefully you said 60 degrees. How about these? Let's get these four up here at the same time. So hopefully you see 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 120 degrees, and 85 degrees. Okay, now the measure of each central angle. X, Y, Z is the central angle. You can see they determined it's 80 degrees because they added 50 and 30 together, so the whole thing is 80. Okay, what would be the measure of central angle B, G, T? That's right, you should have 150 degrees because 40 and 110. How about these two? Pause video and see if you figure it out. Okay, so angle L, K, J is the measure of these two combined arcs. That's 128 degrees. Angle F, M, R is the measure of these two combined arcs. So that would be 103 degrees. There's a couple more for you to do. Okay. KWS is combined measure of these two, that'd be 70 degrees. VIQ, well, just looking at it, I know that's 180 degrees because it's a diameter. So this is a semicircle, which is 180 degrees, but I could add these together and I'd get the 180 degrees that way. Okay, now practice these, the measure of the inscribed angle. Given the arc is 150 degrees, then the inscribed angle is half of it, right? 75. Okay, go ahead and practice some of these. Uh, practice this one, pause. Okay, if this is 82, the angle is half of that, 41. Let's try another one. Okay, if this is 112, then the angle here is half of it, 56. If this is 86, the inscribed angle is half of it, 43. Okay, if this is 155, the measure of the arc is 155, the angle here is half of that, which would be, let's see, 77.5. And um, SGI would be half of the arc, 28 degrees, so this should be 14 degrees. Okay, now we're trying to determine the measure of the intercepted arc. So if this inscribed angle is 54, then its intercepted arc is twice as big. So go that direction, remember we multiplied out, twice as big, we're getting bigger as we get out, and that is 54 times 2, that was 108. Remember we went the other way in class when we were practicing, we were going the other way, we were getting smaller, so we divided by 2. Divide by 2 to get in, right? From 28 getting smaller to divide by 2 to 14. Now we're going the other way, from 54 we're getting bigger, so we're multiplying by 2 to get to 108. Okay, so let's have you figure this one out. Pause. Okay, arc IU should measure 72 degrees. Next two, pause. Okay, this is 162 degrees. This is 62 degrees. Next two, pause. Okay, it's 104 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, now we got to figure out the measure of the angle. They're giving us the measure of one angle. They want us to find the measure of the other angle. Now, the angle they gave us was a central angle, right? 62 degrees, A, O, B, central angle. That means the arc is 62, and we get small down here to the, to the uh, inscribed angle, A, C, B, that they want us to figure out. It's half of 62 or 31, and there you can see how you should figure that out. Okay, here we go. Measure of angle COD is 98 degrees. What is the measure of angle CED? Pause. 
Okay, there's 98, so this should be 49. Measure of angle EOG, 128. This angle here, what is the measure of angle EFG? Okay, so if the central angle is 128, then the intercepted arc is 128, and the inscribed angle is half that, 64. Okay, angle GOH is 74, where's the measure of GIH? Again, central angle is 74, the arc is 74, inscribed angle is 37. This one sometimes throws you off. In fact, we did this one in class before, you might remember. And, and it can throw kids off because they see it's moved. It's not like directly behind. It's so close and it looks weird. And then you have the X's here. It just looks weird to kids. But the reality is that there's the, all the same exact rule applies. If the central angle measures 74, then the intercepted arc measures 74. And the inscribed angle, no matter where it's inscribed on the circle, right, as long as it's inscribed outside of the central angle, right, as long as it's inscribed outside the central angle, it can be anywhere, and it's going to be half the measure of its arc. So here we have half. Half of this would be, instead of 74, it would be 37. Okay, this is 168. Then JIK would be... 84. Good. Okay, KOL is 148, right? So this arc is 148. Therefore, angle KML is half, which is 74. All right, now we're into the parallel lines. Congruent arc theorem, right? Parallel lines, congruent arc theorem. So this says... Whenever parallel lines intercept a circle, that the resulting arcs are going to be congruent, right? So here we go. We have um, arc XZ is 86 degrees. These markings here and here, these arrows right here and here, tell me that these two lines are parallel. So if XZ, arc XZ is 86, then arc WY would also be 86. Okay, here we go. Okay, so if the angle WCX is 102 degrees, so the angle is 102 degrees, what is the measure of arc YZ? It would also be 102 degrees, right? 102 degrees. This is a central angle, this angle C here, right? WCX. It's a central angle and its intercepted arcs are both going to be 102 degrees. Okay, so they want to know what is the measure of this inter uh, this central angle WCX. They've told us the arc WZ is 65, arc XZ is 38. So what do we do? We add those together, we get 103 degrees, and that is the measure of arc WCX. Okay, so now we have... WCX is 105, so the central angle is 105. That means arc WX is 105. Now they want to know what is the measure of inscribed angle WYX. Well, has the same intercepted arc. The arc is 105, so half of that, which is 52.5. Okay, so now we have the measure of angle WCY is 83. Now they want to know what is the measure of XCZ. Okay, so if this angle is 83, then this arc is 83. And because these are parallel lines, because of the little arrows there, we know these are parallel lines, then this arc on this side is congruent and is also 83 degrees. If this arc is 83 degrees, then the central angle that intercepts that arc is also 83 degrees. So the answer is 83 degrees. Okay. Okay, we have an inscribed angle, WYX. This measures 50. Another inscribed angle, which is XYZ, which measures 30. They want to know what is the measure of this whole thing. Okay, so if this is 50, then WX is 100. And if XYZ is 30, then arc XZ is 60. So then what is the measure of arc WXZ? It is 100 plus 60, so it's 160. 
Now it looks like it's goofy because it looks like it's greater than 180 degrees, but we know that it can't be, even though, you know, whatever looks is one thing, but if this is given that this is WYX is 50, then this has to be 100. And if XYZ is 30, then this has to be 60. And so we can add those two arcs together, WXZ, to get 160. All right, interior angles, exterior angles. All the rest has been um, really, to this point, just review. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get into some things that are fairly new to you, okay? So here it says, uh, write an expression for the measure of the given angle. So these are two chords that intersect in the interior of a circle, and what their point of intersection is not at the center, okay? So we explored these the other day in class, and what we found was that these two arcs don't measure exactly the same. But the angles do. The, measure, the angles are vertical angles, so they are congruent, these two angles. That's angle RPO, or RPQ rather, and MPN. Those, are, those two angles are vertical angles, so they are congruent. So how do we find the measures of the arcs? Well, here's how we do it. We take, uh, or how do we find the measure of the angle? They want us to find the measure of the angle RPM. Ah, so they want us to find this angle um, that, that covers this arc here. So again, what we would do is we would take arc RM and arc QN, add them together and divide in half or multiply by a half, right? And that, that would give us, that's the average measure of those two arcs. And then these two angles, which are verticals, would um, both measure, so the, the same. So RPM measures, uh, uh, its measure is equal to one half arc RM plus the measure of arc QN. Okay, ACD. What is the measure of ACD? And you should have exactly the same thing, which is the measure of uh, angle, let me say measure of angle uh, ACD is equals one half of the sum of um, arc AD plus arc VE. Okay, there we go. Okay, try to do these on your own. Draw them out, sketch them out, pause the video, sketch them out, and write it out like I put it there. Thank you. Okay, so JNK, JNK, the measure, the measure of angle, JNK, is equal to one half the sum of arc, let's see, JK and plus, a little bit plus, arc LM. And I should say the measure of arc. Uh, but I'm going to stick with this for now. I hope I, let's see, go to the end here and put my closing parentheses there. I should be writing the measure down. That would be better. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. UWV, okay, the measure of angle. So I would go, the measure of angle UWV is equal to um, one half. Um, the measure of arc, let's see, UWV would be UV plus the measure of arc um, XY, right? Okay. All right. Do these two as well. SWT and HJI. So the measure, oops, measure of angle SWT is equal to one half the measure of arc ST plus the measure of arc UV over here, the measure of angle H. 
ji is equal to one half the measure of arc hi plus the measure of arc fg. Okay, so the key here is just make sure that you know whatever this angle is and this angle is, you add them together, divide it in half, and that will give you the measure of these angles right here, these vertical angles, okay? Ah, now we have something completely different. And this we haven't even explored. So to get this figured out, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up GeoGebra. And we're going to take a look what happens when secants intersect outside of a circle. Uh, we will need just a second while GeoGebra comes up. Okay, so we're going to start with a circle. I'm moving very slow. I don't know what's going on here. Let's let's make sure I've got my perspectives right. And let's just go with the geometry page here. So if I do a circle with a center point, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two lines. So let me get the lines. One like that, and one like this, okay? They intersect outside. Okay, so now we have three things in question. We have this big arc over here, we have this little arc over here, and then we have the measure of that angle. So we're going to explore this a little bit. Um, let's see, if I, I take these, I can move this so we can do a little exploration, right? So we want to know what are the measures of these angles. So let me start by getting the measures of, of, those, of those arcs right there. Okay, and we're going to measure, let me get, um, I get the measure of the angle, let's see, measure the angle from here to here to there. So we can see that that arc, measures, I'm just going to slide that over there, 80.71. So now we need to get the intersections over here. So let's get these points here and here. And we're going to measure, so we do a measure, this angle, from here to here to there. And that one is 24.14. All right now let's measure this angle as well. Okay, from here to there to here. And we get uh what is that? 28.29. All right, so the question is where does that come from, all right? And is there any relationship between the size of these arcs and the size of, you know, this angle here? So it's not really obvious right now, okay, unless you toyed around with it a whole lot. But it should make sense as I move this around that they're all changing together. So it should kind of make sense that, well, if I, that there should be some kind of a relationship here between these, right? Like as we move this around, something about these and that measure I don't know, something in common. So think for a minute about what that might be. Okay, so what that relationship is, if we were to subtract these two, take the larger one and subtract the smaller one, and find the difference in the arcs, then divide it in half, then we would get this measure here. So that's the relationship. So see if we can kind of, I don't know, I think I have a text tool here. Maybe I can type this out, okay? So basically, uh, let's see if I can, no, oh, sorry, I don't want that or that. Let's just try to put it like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the measure of the arc that is big minus the measure of the arc that is small, right? And then I take that and then I divide it by two, right? That's basically what I'm trying to do. Say okay. There's my formula right here. 
arc minus arc divided by 2. And I think it's been a while since I've used um, the calculator function on this, but I think I can get that figured out. Let's, let's, here's what we'll do. We, sorry, hit cancel here. Let's capture this number and record it to a spreadsheet. Let's get the spreadsheet and hit cancel. Sorry, this is equal to, there we go. We're going to get that spreadsheet pulled up. And now, if I can, what I want to do is I want to record all this stuff to the spreadsheet. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. We can see if we can get this to work. So here we go. I'm going to take that number and record it to spreadsheet. I take this number and record it to spreadsheet. And then I'm going to take this number and record it to spreadsheet. Okay. So there's the first, there's the second, there's the third. Now, what I want to do is I want to check to see what would happen if I take this minus that, then divide it in half. So if I said this is going to be equal to, let's say, A1 minus B1 and divide that in half, right? So big arc minus little arc divide in half. And what I'm hoping is that these two numbers, the actual measure of this angle, will be equal to the actual uh, the calculation that we've made right here. So let's see if that works out to be true. Let me get out of the way. I've got to bring this formula down here like this. I don't know if this, if I've written that correctly. I don't, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I've put that in. Oh, I didn't put it in as a formula. Sorry. Let's try this again. So let's go back up here. I think maybe that this button I need. Now that's the sum. I just need to put in a function formula. So oh, get, get that button off here. Okay, so here we go. I want this to be equal to, let's try it again. Equals a a1. What if I can click over here? Equals this. Alright, good. This is good. Equals a1. <laughs> minus b1, close parentheses, and divide by 2. Enter. I don't know if that's going to work or not. We're going to find out real fast. And if it doesn't, that's fine. But then what's going to... Ah, that is just crazy, isn't it? It just... My stupid tool right there is blocking everything. Here we go. I'll drag that down and see if this will actually work. I don't think it's going to. I'm I'm very skeptical about it. Okay, here we go. Oops. So, as I all I have to do to fill this stuff is I just have to move things, right? And it is it is not working. All right, but you're just going to have to take it from me that this actually works. I'm not sure. I can't remember how I put the formula in the spreadsheet and it is not wanting to work for me, so we will just um Delete that and what if I try this again? Equals a oops, one more time. Now that I have some data there, a1 equals let's try clicking here this minus this. And what if I just put that in? How about if we just said that? So I said equals this minus that. Why did double click? And then this minus that and hit enter. Good. And then this can be equal to this divided by two. All right. All right, cool. So now if I grab that and drag it down, you should see. So now we see this angle measure and what our formula calculated matches, right? And, it, and that's a constant every time. There was one time I think I brought the circle inside or the intersection inside the circle, and that's throwing it off here in this little range right here. But as long as that point was outside the circle, so the intersection is outside the circle. Okay, so what did we do again now? What was the formula? We took the big arc minus the little arc, right? That was this first part, big arc minus little arc. And then we took that number, whatever number that was, and we divided it in half. 
okay? And now, and any time we do that, we should be able to calculate that perfectly, okay? No matter how we move this around. Oops. And however we move this around. Okay, and all of that should be calculating perfectly all the way down. We're going to keep going all the way down here. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, I don't know, maybe not hundreds. I've got tons of examples here, so I'm just hitting, hit release, and hopefully it'll, re, it'll show us that they all match. So there that we have it all matching down there, right? Everything matches. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. So. List the intercepted arcs. Now they just want to see where are the arcs. And here we have arc QR is one arc. And arc NP is the other arc. Um, here angle RSU. It is a an R. It's creating two arcs here. So we have this arc here. And this arc here. Okay. And now we have this outer arc here. This inner arc here. Right. This arc right here, that arc right there, okay? And now they want us to figure out the expression. So here we have it. The measure of angle DAC is equal to one-half the measure of arc DEC minus the measure of arc BC, right? So subtract these two, find the difference, then divide in half. That's what you need to be doing here. Subtract these two, okay? Find the difference and divide in half, okay? And um, let's see. Okay. All right, subtract these two, find the difference and divide in half. Okay, so it's the same formula that we're using there. We're just not going to use it right now. All right, now it says uh, create a proof. We're not going to create the proof. We're going to read the proof. They gave us a proof here. So how do we know that, that the formula works for these angles that intercept on the interior? So first of all, it says chords A, E, and B, D are intersecting at point C, and that's given. Then they draw chord A, D. So they make this a triangle right here, right? And then they say... Uh, and that's by construction that they drew this chord AD. And it says the measure of angle ACB is equal to the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle A. So because you have a triangle here, right, you have ACD as a triangle, then this angle ACB is an exterior angle of the triangle, and its measure is equal to half the sum of these two angles right here, right? And that is the exterior angle theorem. And then it says um, that the measure of angle A is equal to half of arc DE, which is true. It's half of arc DE because angle A, right here, that'd be DAE, is an inscribed angle, and DE is its intercepted arc. So that is the inscribed angle theorem. By the same token, D has this angle uh, arc a B is angle sorry angle a D B has arc a B as its inscribed angle so this measure of this angle a D B angle D right here is equal to half the measure of this arc huh so now we have that we have written that angle ACB is equal to the sum of these two and now we have a new term to use instead of the measure of angle A and a new term to use instead of the measure angle D. So we substitute those in and we end up with the measure of angle ACB is one half of the measure of this plus one half the measure of that. And you just distribute, you use the distributed property to find the common factor of one half, pull it out and leave behind the sum of the arcs. So that proves um, that's the proof right there. Okay, so they want us to find um, proof that the measure of angle QSR is equal to one-half the measure of QR minus the measure of RT. And I'm not going to do that right now. We're not. In fact, we're not going to do that at all right now. So um, I'm not going to have you guys worrying about proving 
that right there is not going to be a part of your test. And um, I'll double check to make sure, but I would rather do that with you in person than do it on video. And the same with these proof statements here. Okay. All right. Um, and here we have some more proofs. We're not going to get into the doing the proofs here. You just need to know that formula and be able to use it. And so I'm going to skip these that all want you to practice proving that. But here we're going to practice doing it. So it says arc GJ measures 80 degrees. It sure doesn't look like it. Arc GJ measures 80. Okay. And the measure of angle K is 20. So if this is 20, what we have to do is figure out, we know that the measure of angle K is equal to half the difference in the arcs. So it would be half. We just substitute everything in. We put 20 for angle K. Put one half here. Whatever this arc is, minus 80. All right? And then we end up with multiplying both sides by 2 gives us 40. So 40 is equal to the measure of the big arc minus 80. Add 80 to both sides and you get the measure of arc Fi equals 120. Okay, so let's see if you can do some of these problems. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you get this problem done. Okay, so I know that arc KM is 120, and I know that arc JN is 100. Now this is the one where we have an interior angle. This is not an X, this is an exterior angle over here, but this one is an interior angle, so hopefully you didn't get thrown off by that. The interior angle, the measure of the interior angle KLJ is equal to half the measure of its intercepted arcs. Well, we don't know the measures of these arcs. We know the measures of these arcs, KM and JN. So that will at least give me this angle KLM. So let's figure that first. So so here we go. K, I'm going to I'm going to write here a little bit. I'm going to draw just for a second. So arc KM, this is 120 right here, right? So this is 120 degrees. Okay? And this one over here is arc JN and it's a hundred. So what I need to do is I need to find out the average. So I'm going to add those together 120 plus 100 and then divide that by 2. So that's 220 divided by 2 which is 110. So if this angle here measures 110 and obviously this measures also 110. Now I'm going to change colors on you real quick. If those measure 110, this angle is supplementary to it because together these two angles are a linear pair. And a linear pair postulate says they're supplementary. So this is 110. This one has to be the difference between 110 and 180, which is 70. So we have a 70 degree angle. And that's what they wanted us to learn. Now notice there's a number of steps in here to find KLJ. First, I had to figure out, you know, what the measure of any of these interior angles were. And then once I figured that out, I got to remember these are linear pair and go for the other angle. So just take a couple of steps to get through these problems, okay? All right, let's move on to the next problem. Have you practiced this next one? And all done the same way. You have to understand everything to do them. Go ahead and work on these two problems and pause the video. Okay, so now here we go. I'm going to work on this. Measure of angle X. Well, this is, um, this is an angle that's inscribed. So if I could figure out RS, I would know that angle X is half of that, right? Um, if I, can I figure that out? Well, let's just, let's just see if we can kind of figure that out. Watch this. Let's see. Got a color here. Let's mark what we do know. So it says, it says arc VW is 85. So this is 85 degrees. Man, that doesn't look like an 85 degree angle, but whatever. That's 85 right here. This this little baby arc VW right here, right? Okay. And it says, oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Let's undo that. 
Uh, let's try that again. Here we go. All right. So we have um, arc. All right. Arc VW is 50. Sorry about that. That's still pretty big to be 50 or teeny to be 50. This one is 85, right? So the way I figure this angle X out is 85 minus 50 is 35. And then 35, I would take 35 and I would divide that in half, right? 35 divided by half is equal to 17.5. 17.5. Okay, so 85 minus 50 divided in half, and that's what they wanted to know the measure of angle X. So 17, and that's a 0.5, right? Okay, over here we have the measure of angle um, WUY. So WUY is 300, and they want to know the measure of angle W. Wait a minute, W. Oh, arc. I'm so sorry. Ah. Okay, the measure of arc W U Y. So this arc is 300. And they want to know what is the measure of this angle W Y X. Well, okay, we can do that. The the um angle here is the supplement or this is 300, so this would have to be 3 this would have to be 60, right? This this arc right here has to be 60 degrees. Here I have an inscribed angle. This is going to have to be, well, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take the 300 minus the, the 60 and get 240, right? But that doesn't make any sense. If I do that, 240 degrees, then divide it in half, then this is a 120 degree angle, 120. But that doesn't really make sense to me at all. Um... 300 minus 60. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here, but there's something very goofy about this because it's suggesting that, you know, there's a couple different ways to look at this. Um, if this is 300, this is 60, and I subtract them, I'm going to have to go back. Let me go let me pause. Okay, I'm not going to pause this and go back. I gotta, I, I'll got i ruin everything I've been doing here. So you're just going to have to wait with me. I'm going to clean this up. We're going to go through it one more time. All right. I, I was forgetting and using something wrong here, obviously. This this is not an exterior angle, okay? When I was working with point X in this problem, we were talking about an exterior angle, exterior to circle O here, the smaller circle O. It's inscribed in the larger circle O, but it is um, exterior to this one, so I use the formula where we subtract. This is not an exterior angle. I, I don't need to do any subtracting here. All I need to think about is that this is an inscribed angle, right? It's inscribed. And so the arc that is formed is um, twice the measure of this angle, or rather, the angle is half the measure of its resulting arc. So if we look at this and say this is 300 degrees, okay? So that's 300. Then how big would the angle here have to be that created that? It would have to be half. So this is a 150 degree angle. Okay. So what that tells me is that this is supposed to be, and this is what was throwing me off a little bit because I could see and my, my brain was saying something was wrong. I can't remember what I've done wrong here. But these two together have to form 180, right? And that means the whole circle is 360, right? So if this is 300 degrees, then this out here would be 60, right? And this angle here would be 30, and that makes sense because 150 and 30 is 180, and the whole circle is 360. It's just it's just way off. This is not a 30 degree angle. This is almost a 90 degree angle. But whatever, the numbers, the image doesn't look right, but the numbers work out. We have 300 degree arc out here, right? And we remember when we're talking about arcs and and angles formed where the vertex is is a point of tangency like in this case right so the vertex is a point of tangency then the vertex is inscribed and that's all you have to remember is the inscribed angle theorem that tells me that the arc the intercepted arc is twice the measure of the inscribed angle or rather that the inscribed angle is half the measure of its um arc right of the intercepted arc okay so that's that's how we would do that one
Sorry about that pause there. Let's see. All right, more practice problems. These are really good ones. We're going to keep going with these, similar to what we'll see on the test. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to pause that. Here we go. Let's try these out. So I've got the measure. Uh, they want us to find out the measure of arc RS. They want us to know what is this measure. So far, what have they told us? Well, they said this is 30. Right, so this UV is 30. And they're saying that angle RTS is 80. And that is 80. So they want us to know what would this arc have to be. Well, what I know is that for interior angles, for angles on the interior of the circle, that the measure of the angle is the average of these two. So if I call this, let's call this x for a minute here, right? So I would say 30 plus x, right? If I add those two arcs together and then divide it in half, I would get 80. I would get the measure of that angle, 80. So the trick here is to multiply both sides by 2, and you'd end up with 30 plus x. Oops. Ah, video's getting long here. Is equal to 160, right? If I multiply both sides by 2, 30 plus x equals 160, and subtract 30 from both sides. So the answer is this would have to be 130. This angle would be 130. Okay, let's try this other one. Determine the measure of angle D. Okay, so I, now I have an exterior angle, an exterior angle. So I remember that these two arcs, I subtract them, and I find the difference between the larger and the smaller, and then divide that in half. So here I have the larger X, Z, X, C. Aha, oh, this is not the, this one is 150, okay. And then this one right here, let's see, C, B, this is 30. So I know the whole thing is 360, so this one has to be 180, right? So I take 360 minus 30 minus 150, and what I'm left with is 180. So the measure of angle D is equal to half the difference here. So we go 180 minus 30. Get that difference and divide it in half. So it's 150 divided by, half, by 2, and we get 75. So this is a 75 degree angle right here. Okay. Okay, let's get you the next problem and let you pause. Um, oh, we've moved on to the next lesson. And I'm gonna I'm going to pause this here. I think that's enough right now. Um, and we will go through this next lesson uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um, if you have time, you can start to work through in the book and take a look at these because I promise I'm going to move very, very fast through lesson 11.4 tomorrow. Okay, you can find out what it, what we learn when we have these chords of bisect and they are perpendicular. There's a lot of things there we can learn, but that should be enough for one day in class.